vectors have a magnitude and a direction. For example, if we have a force of 25 newtons to the right, this will have a magnitude of 25 newtons and a direction to the right. We may want to add that vector to another vector that is 35 newtons to the right. When vectors are parallel to each other, we can simply combine them. So 25 newtons to the right plus 35 newtons to the right is equal to 60 newtons to the right. We should also note that if our vectors are pointing in opposite directions, but still parallel to each other, we simply subtract them. If, however, our vectors are not parallel to each other, we must determine their vector component. If we have a vector that is 25 meters per second at a 45 degree angle, we can break it down into its two components, the component in the x direction and the component in the y direction. We can treat this vector like it's a triangle. To find the x component, we know that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. We can rearrange this equation so that the component of the velocity in the x direction or the adjacent side of the triangle is equal to the length of the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta or our angle. We can do a very similar step to determine the component of our velocity in the y direction. We know that the sine of theta is equal to the side opposite our angle divided by the hypotenuse. We can rearrange this equation to determine the component of our velocity that is in the y direction. The y component of our velocity, or the side opposite of our angle, is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta, or the sine of our angle. These steps have broken down our vector into its x component and its y component. This process can be used to combine vectors. Let's say that we have two vectors that are not parallel to each other. Our first step is again to break them down into their x and y components. Now we can combine the two vector components in the x direction and the two vector components in the y direction. This will give us a resultant vector in the x direction and a resultant vector in the y direction. These two components can now be recombined to determine our resultant vector. These two separate vectors represent the sides of a right triangle, and the resultant vector would be our hypotenuse. The value or the magnitude of the hypotenuse or our resultant vector can be determined using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where the a and the b are our x component and our y component. The hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum of the square of the two sides. Once we complete this math process, we will know the value or the magnitude of the hypotenuse and the magnitude of our resultant vector. Remember though that every vector has a magnitude and a direction. The direction or the angle of our resultant vector can be determined using tangent properties. We know that the tangent of theta, or an angle, is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we know that theta, or the angle, is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, or the inverse tangent of our y component divided by our x component. This gives us our resultant vector's angle. So we now know its magnitude and its direction.